this is the design I used last year for my real swinging web shooters. But this isn't my design alone. This design is an intellectual collaboration among billions of people throughout the world, whether they know it or not. Do, 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 do. This is the web shooter. Like most things, it's designed to take advantage of other people's designs. Yet you have metal, you have screws, you have tubing, all things that are part of the design, but I can't really say I designed them. And that's okay. If engineers had to reinvent the wheel every time we wanted to build something, we'd never get anything done. More importantly, we wouldn't learn from each other's mistakes. So if all we want to do is build some web shooters, let's save some time and figure out what's already out there. YouTube is perfect for this. It's full of people like us who are interested in building cool stuff and they're constantly trying new things. But with great freedom also comes a lot of shit. So we need to set some boundaries on what's useful and what's not. And we do that by defining our problem. Let's get scratching. <laughs> We want to know how to make web shooters, but since there's a lot of you at varying different skill levels, the design should be simple, low cost, and relatively safe. Now we should try and find something that seems to fit those parameters. So I'll find a video like this, which are usually tutorials, but what I'm really looking for is kind of the mechanism that they actually use to fire the thing. Cool. So it looks like he uses pen springs, which is great because it's super easy to source and he integrates the springs into the actual projectile. That's really good for minimizing space so you can have a nice sleek design on your wrist. And it shoots pretty far, but also it's not like unreasonably powerful. Something like this is a great starting point because it pretty much has all the criteria we're trying to meet. So let's find some more designs to see if we can add anything to it. Jay Laser makes this incredible web shooter that can actually stick to walls and hold his weight. He has this ridiculously powerful like nail, like explosive nail hammer that he uses to actually stick into walls. But I don't think I need to say how dangerous this thing is. I mean, an incredible example of something that looks really cool or would be really cool to build, but doesn't exactly fit our limitations. So we can't take every aspect of this. Now that we have a couple of solutions that answer our desired problems, we can take the qualities that we like the best and put them into our own design. Alright, here's what I got right now. It's a little bit messy because it's kind of just for me to figure out what we're actually going to build, but um, it's simple enough that we should be able to put it together pretty quickly. So, I mean, let's build it. But uh, with what? <laughs> understand how awesome these places are. It's like having access to an infinite catalog of all the items the world has to offer. And everything's so cheap, I don't even like go in with a specific item in mind. I kind of just walk around until I find something that looks useful. Oh my god, it's so cold. And you know, one of the best things I was able to pick up at that store was this brand new paper metal plastic. Yeah, I mean, you could call it a notebook, but a notebook isn't very useful to us right now. Sure, I can, like, write in it, but that's that's about all a notebook was made for. When it comes to solving our problem, I'd much rather have a sheet of plastic, all these loose leaf paper, and these metal coils. And luckily for me, all these materials just happened to be in the form of a notebook when I found them. Meaning I only had to buy one thing instead of three. And it's this resourcefulness that helps aspiring creators like us even start building things in the first place. We're able to take everyday objects and break them down into the components that make them most useful for solving our problem. Speaking of problem, I think we can start solving it. How do you spell tutorial? Tutor? Tutor? Real. Welcome to this super simple web shooter tutorial. You will need a notebook, preferably one with the plastic cover, rubber bands, 
it's very loud. These are gonna wear out eventually and you're gonna wanna replace them, but you'll see in the design that it's really easy to replace them once they're done. And you will need a roll of scotch tape. You're also just gonna need like a plastic pen, like one of those standard Bic pens. Make sure the entire thing is like that soft plastic though, from the body to the cap, because we're gonna need to kind of cut into it. And tools, don't let this big wall of tools intimidate you, because all you're gonna need is scissors. Step one, take 10 sheets of... Take 10 sheets of paper and cut them lengthwise into strips that are five inches wide. This book is too small. <laughs> Make sure you get a notebook that is at least five inches wide. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, wow. Instant regret. Step two, roll up all the strips and tape the roll shut. Make sure you leave enough room to accommodate one of those standard pens. And the best way to do that is to literally just roll up the paper with the pen inside. It should be able to slide out pretty easily. Step three, repeat steps one and two twice more, but with strips that are only one inch wide. Uh oh. Oh, actually, I think you guys need to see this. That's my trash can basketball hoop. It encourages me to throw things out because it becomes a game. Hold on. Oh no. I just realized that all the shots were super low and you couldn't see my face the entire time. <laughs> I'm gonna take my tension to paper and I could just cut two one inch slots out of it instead of having to roll another grab another tension to paper. I mean I don't know why 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 you would do that, but in case you were thinking about doing that. Don't. So here's a cool thing for getting straight lines. Mark one inch and two inches from the edge. And then I'm gonna go to a different spot on the paper and I'm gonna mark another one inch and two inch. And since this is the same distance from the edge here as it is here, I can just connect the two dots and you get a perfectly straight line across the paper. If you're cutting it all at once, all the pages at once, make sure you hold it really tight. All the pages that are on the inside and on the bottom are gonna wanna shift around while you're cutting. You should end up with two sets of 10 strips that are one inch wide. And just like in step one, we're going to roll up these strips, but differently from step one, we are not going to accommodate for the size we're not gonna accommodate for the size of a pen in the middle. We're just gonna roll it up as tight as we can. What we're really just looking for is two tightly packed rolls. Perfect. Step four, tape two of the smaller rolls to either side of one of the barrel exits. There. And do your best to make sure they're on opposite ends, it's like it is a straight line between the two rolls. Tape them down really firmly, because these parts are probably gonna be under the most stress. Don't tape them down so firmly that the squeezes the barrel, because we still want that pen to be able to slide through really easily. Best way to do this is to just loosely layer a bunch of tape. It's not gonna be so tight that it constricts the barrel, but there's gonna be so much of it that it can handle most of the load that's gonna be put on these. And look at that. Step five, we're gonna take off the plastic cover and we're gonna cut out a rectangle that's five inches by four inches. Just double checking, cause I'm really bad at measuring. Perfect. By the way, all these like marks and stuff here, this is like four year old epoxy and hot glue. This was my first workbench before I got this big thing. Step six, we're gonna fold the plastic rectangle in half two times widthwise, meaning that we're folding along the four inch line. A really good way to fold it, make sure you line up these edges and you can crease it with your thumb, but since this is plastic and not paper, it has a tendency to return to its original shape. So what we're gonna really do is we're gonna take the side of our scissors, not the sharp end, the, the uh, blunt end, and we're gonna like force crease it by like sliding that down here. I don't think I put this in the step, so we're just gonna tape this shut. Okay, we should have something kind of like this. This is good. And remember, since we folded widthwise, the longest part of it should still be five inches. So let me just check, because I suck. Yes, we're good. So just so you know, this is gonna be our barrel, and this is gonna be our trigger. Step seven is to secure the trigger one inch behind the two side rolls on the barrel. So what does that mean? Well, these are our two side rolls and this is our trigger. We wanna go one inch behind the two side rolls here. 
which gives us just enough room when we place this down to tape this around the barrel. Remember, anytime we tape something to the barrel, we don't want to do it too tightly because that pen still has to be able to slide in and out of there nice and easy. <laughs> hey, look at it. It's starting to come together. Step eight. We're going to fold a sheet of loose leaf four times lengthwise, three times widthwise, and then we're going to tape it shut. This is what we're trying to get. Literally just a block. And it's okay if you have something that looks like this. It's nothing pretty, but it's literally just a block of paper. Now that block could even be something else. It could be like an eraser. If you have an eraser, you can use that as your block. The thing is I'm just using paper to try and make the most of the book that we bought. Step nine, we're simply gonna secure the paper block to the end of the trigger. Hey, there it is. Step 10, we're gonna take the pen and we're gonna make a hole in the top of the cap. You see this little kind of hole thing up here? So use your scissors and be careful, grind out the hole. Perfect. Three eggs. <laughs> hey, nice, thank you. I can eat breakfast and do this at the same time. Step 11, we're gonna bend the tab of the pen upwards and we're gonna force the cat back onto the pen. So pens have this tab right here that allows you to slide them onto sheets of paper. But basically we wanna get this pen to kind of bend upwards without breaking it. Constant gentle pressure. You don't wanna force it all at once. Perfect. It should kind of be like that. We're going to force this all the way back onto the pen. And now this force, since the pen is friction sealed, should be enough to kind of just hold it in place. But if you find that later on your cap is separating from the pen, just put a little glue in the cap and then force it back on. Step 12. We're gonna cut two small slits in the top of the pen cap. Now, you should be able to do this with your scissors. Check this out. So you make two small cuts and then you fold it out and then you can just cut it off. Easy. Same on the other side. And what we have is a pen with two slits in the cap. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, the whole process has just been type the steps out, show them the steps, and then bring the camera really close and then show them the build. I so. like it. I like it. I like it. Is this loud? Step 13, we're gonna slip knot two rubber bands together. And a slip knot is basically when you have two loops and you wanna join them together. And this applies for anything. So I'm going to take my first loop and I'm going to put it in the second loop, like that. Pass this over this one and put it through this one and pull them together, right? Like this. Two rubber bands joined together, slip knot. And now we're actually ready to test. It's good to test as you go along, just to kind of make sure everything's working. What we're gonna do is remember our pen cap with the two slits in it. We're gonna take the knot and we're going to place it in the hole that we made. And the excess rubber band should be able to come out of it through those two slits on the side. Next, we're gonna take our firing assembly and we're going to lower the pen into the back of it. Should still be able to slide freely. Then we are going to take our two rubber hoops and put them over the two smaller rolls at the front of the barrel. And you should be able to move this back and have it snap forward. That's gonna be giving us the firepower. And the great thing is when you're done, you can literally just pop the rubber band off. So like if these rubber bands get old, you can just like take them off and put on a new one. Yeah, and I guess while we're here, we should just, it's not a step on the thing. We can actually make the projectile we're gonna shoot really quick. You can either take, and I should have put this on the list, but I didn't. I'm gonna assume you have a pencil. You're gonna take a pencil, and you're going to break off the tip. I'm gonna press it up against the desk, and boom. And I'm gonna also wanna round out these splinters. Just kinda of roll it along the table, and you should get something that's rounded out like this. We're gonna take off the uh, eraser part. You probably just do this. Yeah, you can just do it with your hands. And then we're going to take the rest of the pencil, and we're going to load it down the barrel. And you're gonna notice that as you load in the pencil, you're gonna start pushing back that pen piece. So we're gonna push the pencil, and then place the block in front of it. And now it's locked in place, but it's still under tension. So if you move the block out of the way, and you can kind of see how this thing is gonna work. We'll work on a strap in a minute, so it can strap to your hand, and then you can just... As long as you're at a point where your web shooter is able to do that, then you know you're on the right track. All right, we're almost done. This is my tutorial thing, by the way, that I wrote on paper, but for you guys, I'm typing it out so you can see it. Step 14, we're gonna take a sheet of loose leaf, we're gonna fold it three times width-wise, and then we're gonna tape it shut. So, width-wise, one, two, three. Now we're just taping off all the ends. Now, we're gonna have to cover the entire thing in 
tape. What you can do, right, is instead of wrapping it around a bunch of times, you could just place one sheet of tape across the entire thing. Oh wow, that is the perfect length. There you go, now we have like a strap. Step 15, we're gonna attach the strap to the web shooter. We're gonna place the strap right below the two side rolls, right where we attach the trigger. And we're gonna place it right in the middle, roughly. Then we're gonna take one strand of tape and along the length of it, we're going to just apply that. And now in order to reinforce it, now that we have tape that's on the straps, we wanna wrap that those ends of the tape onto the strap and that's gonna hold it there permanently. So we're pretty much done. And how do you get it on, of course? Now I will say this is not the most glamorous thing, but remember, we're trying to make the most out of the materials we have. We're gonna attach one piece of tape to the back of one of the straps, leaving um, about two inches of it exposed. Then on our non-taped end, we're gonna wrap that first around, and then we're gonna take our taped end, we're gonna wrap this around, we're just gonna press the tape up against there, and now it's strapped up. So basically you're taping it onto your wrist. So when you wanna take it off, you just kind of find that edge. But now we can, attach the firing element onto it. Boom, look at that. And we can take our projectile, put it in there. Now you gotta get a good shot of this. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. It's not unreasonably powerful, but it has really good distance. Hey. Oh, scary, I didn't want to hit my phone. <laughs> now this is the base of the web shooter. It's the simplest version we could possibly make. I mean like, you could literally make this sitting in class without like standing up. That's all how a lot of our first web shooters were made. But I don't blame you for thinking that this isn't a whole lot. I mean, all this thing does is shoot pencils. How are we gonna make it better? How are we gonna make it do cool Spider-Man stuff? How are we gonna innovate? <laughs> Innovation requires us to come up with new ideas, but remember it's so hard for a new idea to be a hundred percent original It's way more practical to just build off of other people's ideas, and I know just where to find some For you to have made it this far into the video, you're either a family member or a friend or someone who really cares about making cool stuff. So here's a couple of ways you can approach adding your own awesome additions to this thing. This first one I call the mag hook. It's gonna be like a magnetic grappling hook. So you can grab stuff that's metal and you can grab stuff that's stuff. It turns out that when you load it and it's actually locked in place, there's kind of a lot of space where the pencil's outside of the barrel, which is good because then I can add stuff onto it that normally wouldn't fit inside. That's exactly how I'm gonna add the hooks. And I wanna use these jumbo paper clips. They already kind of have a hook shape. Oh, whenever you're working with things that can go flying into your eyes, you should just, you know, it's nice to have. Okay, that's two. I think we should get like four, maybe three. And all I'm gonna do is just tape them to the pencil. Yeah, the grappling hook part's kinda done. So if I load it into here. Oh, okay. The pencil actually needs to be a little bit shorter because it's pushing the entire push rod out the back of the thing. And if you haven't realized already, the longer the projectile is, the more powerful it's gonna be in this thing because it's gonna push the rod, the, the inner push rod, more to the back, which is gonna pull on the strings even tighter. So loading, putting it in front of the block, and just shoot it up there. Cool. But, you know, a grappling hook doesn't work if you can't pull it back to you. I got this really cool Honda Power Upgrade Super Strength System 100 meter 0, 0.0. Oh, it has a little fish sticker holding the line in place. So to attach the line, I'm just gonna tape it to the back. Cool. I'm gonna try and grab my book bag. It has a lot of straps on it, so it should be easy to, to snag. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the string's long enough. Kinda just really get it out there. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Well, that was almost really bad. But look, I got it. Time to add the magnet to this little guy. It's a neodymium magnet. I'm just gonna tape this to the bottom of it. Ah, the mag hook is complete. There's metal stuff here, so let's see if I can grab something. Crowbar. No matter. We'll use these. Oh no, I dropped my keys. Nothing my magnet web shooter can't solve. But wait, you may think I missed. 
Fuck. Ah, uh, but you forgot this technique. Ooh. Yeah. Are these keys even magnetic? Oh! I got them! Three. The day is saved. Next invention, the sticky shot. It's gonna work kinda like Spider-Man's actual web, because it's just gonna stick to anything that can be stuck to. It's gonna have the stickiness to stick to things that can be stuck to. I have an incredible product to show you. Double-sided tape, courtesy of the 99 cent store. I will need a pencil, a new pencil. Second, I will need my double-sided tape. I'm gonna put quite a bit, and I'm also gonna make it a little messy, because I'm gonna need that randomness to help with the stuck to two to stuck to tutality of it all. Cool, I have a pencil with a lot of tape on it. It's also gonna need to have a string attached to it so we can pull stuff back. And now, check it out. Um, so this helps when you wanna grab something that has like an obtuse shape, maybe it's really lightweight and like prone to getting stuck to glue. Oh no, I forgot my plans. If, if only, if only I had my plans for making, for how to make, if only I had my, well, there it is, but completely out of arm's reach. Not a problem. Not a problem. Oh, and then I can pull it over here. Hey, to a degree. You kind of got to really. Boom. <laughs> the mag mount. See, I tried to do like the magnetic field lines. The mag mount is actually going to allow us to magnetically roll the web shooter and attach it to our arm. We want to get two platforms first. So I got these popsicle sticks from the 99 cent store and we're going to attach magnets to them. Whoa, dude. You don't realize how cool magnets are until you're holding them. So I'm literally just taping the magnets to the popsicle stick. Make sure you attach the magnets such that the two platforms that they're going to be sitting on actually attract each other. And I, I, I did them wrong. Okay. It's orientation based. I didn't, I didn't know. So, boom, sticks together. Awesome. Oh, nice. So I attached it to the um, attached it to the strap from before, and I attached it to the web shooter, and they kind of just attach now. <laughs> yeah, all I have to wear is the strap now, right? I just wear this piece, and then when I'm ready to shoot, when I'm ready to shoot, when I'm ready to shoot, when I'm ready to shoot. Jesus Christ, when I'm ready to shoot. Hey! <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> so you're like, phew, phew, phew. All right, I'm done being Spider-Man. You can put it in your pocket. And you're like, oh wait, I gotta be Spider-Man really quick. Yeah! But um, it's not the sturdiest thing, but that's for you to improve. You can get stronger magnets, you can get more magnets, you can get electromagnets, so you can press a button and it comes on. A lot of stuff to improve with this, so that's fun. Nice and fun for you guys. Yeah. So, there it is. Web shooters out of a notebook. But if you were really paying attention, you just got something way cooler. Remember those funky steps from earlier? Well, they don't just apply to making notebook web shooters. I've used those steps on every project. Because when you build off others' designs, make the most of everyday objects, try out your solutions, and expound upon your ideas, you gain the ability to create whatever you want. And at least for me, that's one of the coolest things in the world.